Everybody ready for our next speaker? Yeah. Our next speaker is Emmanuel Apal. Thanks. <laughs> change my screen settings. All right, that's much better. Cool. So today we're going to talk a little bit about application secret management with AWS. Um, Raise your hands if you feel like your company does a good job in securing your application secrets. All right, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of positivity towards your <laughs> company's practices. Um, but you know, it's, there's a lot of different ways to handle application secrets. And um, you know, in the different places that I've worked, um, see people do it a, a good way. I've seen some bad practices. For example, um, just because your secrets are in a private GitHub repo does not necessarily mean that they're secure. Um, but you know, uh, it, is, it is at least, at least better than having it in the public repo. Um, so let's talk, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about you know, who I am and uh, what I'm going to be doing today. So as I mentioned earlier, my name is Emmanuel LaPau, part of the Black Code Collective. Uh, we are selling t-shirts, so if you are a fan of the t-shirt I have on right now, feel free to get one at this URL. And that's my Twitter up there, if you feel like listening to some of the rants I have about software development in general. Um, so, why do I care about secret management? For one, it's a, you definitely don't want to go to wake up one morning and there's a headline in the Washington Post, and you see a title like, insert name here has left a huge trove of highly sensitive data on exposed servers uh, with the keys to the kingdom. Very sensationalized, but uh, it's never fun to wake up and, and get a, a surprise like that, because uh, if there's one thing I've learned about being a site reliability engineer is that I don't like surprises. Um, so I want to talk about a few use cases in which you might uh, manage your secrets uh, there's uh, in doing infrastructure engineering, you can have uh, SSH keys uh, in your in your secrets, SSL certs, uh, configurations. If you're you know working with Kubernetes, it might be like your kube config that you might share with like a Jenkins server or something. Um, application engineering that would be like API keys and database credentials, uh, single usage, um, one-time secret for like I don't know if your IT has to send you a password for an account, you can use one-time secret. Um, and then, of course, external service integration like Kubernetes secret syncing. Um, application secret management is pretty important, especially if you're in a startup and you're about to be bought out during the due diligence phase. Uh, they usually typically come into your company and walk through a list of things that you guys do well and things that you need improvements on. And, and that handling the secrets always tends to come up. Um, so I definitely want to walk through a few uh, examples and how you could integrate those uh, better using AWS specifically. So just in case you're unaware of what the typical life cycle is or workflow is for uh, a secret, you would have your application that makes a request to a vault. A vault could be all sorts of different options. Um, your vault is going to take this request, uh, look for the secret, decrypt it, kick it back to your application, and let's say it's a database uh, password, and then your app now has that secret that it can use in a authentication request to that database. Pretty straightforward. The problem is the vault has so many options. If you go and Google right now, what is one of the best uh, uh, secret vaults out there? You're going to get a whole list, uh, get a whole bunch of medium blog posts on why everyone thinks their solution is the best solution. Um, you have HashiCorp Vault, you have AWS Secret Manager, and AWS Parameter Store. Why there's two, I'm not really sure. Um, Microsoft Azure, there's Key Vault, there's LastPass, 1Password, even Base64 encoding. 
maybe, I don't know. I've seen it before, though. <laughs> um, so let's dive into Parameter Store, because that's kind of where I want to focus on today. So let's start with a quick demo on what is Parameter Store and what that looks like. So we're going to dive into AWS's System Manager. It's going to be an option all the way at the bottom in Shared Resources. When you click that, it's going to give you your list of parameters. Pretty straightforward. Um, and on the UI, you're going to see you know, the name of your key, uh, the tier that is standard. It's a secure string, meaning that I've encrypted it with a KMS key, um, and the description, key ID, and the version. Uh, when it was last modified and the last user. So we're just going to create a real quick secret just for demo purposes. We'll call this DevOps Days Test Description. Don't need one. We'll leave it as standard. We'll use a secure string, the default uh, key, and call this a test. All right, so then we're going to scroll down, select that. And once you select it, uh, you have an option of a history. Uh, you have a history uh, menu where you, AWS will store up to 100 different versions of your secret. So this is useful in the use case where your engineers are constantly making changes, and all of a sudden you made a projection deployment and things start breaking. Now you can go back and revert what a secret was, restart your service, and call it a day. Um, and then you also have the ability to decrypt it to see what that secret would be and who was the person who modified it, because to be honest, that's the most important uh, feature of a secret, because uh, when things do go wrong, you need to understand why they went wrong. And the reason I like Parameter Store is because of the auditing uh, behind it. Um, if you're storing things in like a last pass in a shared note, uh, you don't necessarily have that auditing feature or the, the revertability secret. When you do update these secrets, you just got to hope that your memory is good so you know how to revert really quickly when things go wrong. Um, and then, so on top of that, let's see, let me make this smaller. You encrypt your key using a KMS, and a KMS key uh, would be a uh, customer management uh, key. I do recommend that you create your own KMS key when you are encrypting your secrets, um, mainly because you can then apply uh, IAM roles and, and permissions, accessibility uh, rules behind who can encrypt, who can decrypt, who can even read a secret, so on and so forth. The nice thing about Parameter Store is because you know, AWS, to be honest, has a monopoly right now when it comes to cloud engineering. And you already probably have uh, IAM users and roles clearly defined. So you don't, know, you don't have to now rebuild your accessibility policies uh, when you're handling your different secrets. You can just kind of reuse and update what you already have. So if we're going to create a key, let's call it SSM slash dev for secrets, click next, we don't need any tags. You can then also determine who the key administrators would be, whether that's your site reliability team or maybe there's another admin team. For now, I'm just gonna use this user I created before and then I'm gonna say that, say that this user has the ability to use this key to encrypt and decrypt. And it's going to give you a preview on what your IAM role is going to look like. And let me make this a little bigger. I realize it's going to be tough to see from the back. But what it does, it says that uh, this user has the ability to create the key, describe the key, but most importantly, um, let's try and find the, there we go, the encrypt and decrypt rules. Uh, this is really what's going to be the main feature when you're using it for Parameter Store. So typically, my workflow is that for dev, there's a key for dev, key for stage, key for prod, um, and then there's a key for global secrets because sometimes uh, you don't get that diversity of secrets and you have to use the same one across the board. So you can really begin to uh, fine tune who has access to what key and, and, and at what moment. So we're just gonna finish that real quick. And that's that, pretty straightforward. Um, I like it because it's a managed service. I didn't have to build this out myself, um, so there's no maintenance overhead. It's just configuration at this point. So a few things I like, just to reiterate, is that you can reuse IAM policies and roles for access management. 
Um, there's change management auditing, so CloudTrail will track who's been updating and touching secrets, so you know when things are being deleted when they shouldn't be. Um, that could be propagated to a Slack channel or email or so on and so forth. Um, no, no maintenance overhead, just configuration, and it is encrypted at rest with KMS. The workflow for a parameter store is as follows. You have a user, a developer. Um, they're typically going to be using the CLI or the UI. Um, not a big fan of the UI. I don't know if you guys have played around with AWS's UIs in general. Most of them kind of suck across the board. So <laughs> I just use CLIs now going forward. <laughs> Uh, so a user will confirm that one, that they're allowed to even use the key that they're trying to encrypt the key with using their IM roles. Um, once that's been uh, accepted, then you're gonna update ECS parameter store. Then on the back end, when your application needs to use it, whether it's using an SDK or the CLI itself, um, it's gonna go through the same workflow where it confirms that it has access to decrypt your secret and then uh, gets it back directly from parameter store. So I wanted to at least give a baseline on what we're going to be talking about uh, in a few more minutes. So does anyone have a question on what they've seen so far? Who is actually even using Parameter Store? OK, all right, so I'm not like, I'm preaching to the choir over here, it seems like. Good stuff. Um, let's see. So yes, so when I, when, I was, when I finally got picked to do this talk, I've given this talk once before in uh, February or March, something like that. I was like, okay, cool, I can just come here, use the same slides, call it a day, it's gonna be really simple. Um, but the, the, one, of the, one of the great things about our, our jobs is that technology moves really, really quickly. And a service that you were using maybe six months ago might have completely revamped either one their pricing structure, might have revamped their different features, or even the tools that you were using to interact with a service now becomes outdated because of a AWS push. So I was like, all right, let's see what's new with Parameter Store. And I was like, oh, wow, they've introduced advanced parameters. And that was posted on April 25th, which now, as I've realized, has changed completely how I would have initially pitched Parameter Store to you guys because it has pricing concerns. So let's get right into it. What is a standard secret and what is an advanced secret? Um, so standard would be they allow you up to like 10,000 secrets versus um, 100,000. Um, they have increased the size in which uh, you can store secrets from 4 KB to 8. Um, it's still going to be 100 history values. Um, but now, one of the annoying things about uh, Parameter Store, because there's always cons to these things, is that um, the transactions per second in AWS would, would cause you to have API rate limiting if you were accessing secrets in real time for a lot of your applications. So simple example is, let's say during a use, use, user flow, um, your application makes a call to a database in real time, it pulls the secret in real time to authenticate the, the user. Um, if you scale this across all of your different microservices that access your user table, you're going to hit that API limit pretty quickly. So I guess that was a concern, and people complained about it a lot in their forums, and now they've come up with an advanced secret, which allows you uh, 100 API uh, transactions per second, up to 1,000 API transactions per second. But of course, the difference is always about what is the best price for me. Um, a parameter store before was pretty much free um, until AWS came out with a second secret manager uh, called AWS Secret Manager. And we sh I'm going to talk about this a little bit because it is important to understand the differences because uh, they're pretty, they're pretty um, different products even though it seems like they're solving the same problem. Um, you would typically use parameter store for API keys, um, possibly database credentials and miscellaneous key pair values like API, uh, like API keys and so on and so forth. Uh, you do get the versioning, you get the history, and you get the cloud trail auditing. Um, but with Secret Manager, you don't get the versioning, you don't get the history, but it does allow you to rotate your secrets if you happen to be using RDS. This is pretty sweet in the fact that you don't have to glue and pull together your own custom scripts to rotate your secrets if this is a security policy that you need to adhere to. Um, and so with Secret Manager, it's 40 cents per secret per month versus Parameter Store, which is free, but you, they do charge you on the transactions per second when you do interact with their API. Advanced 
uh, would be five cents per secret. So in this respect, unless you have a reason to rotate passwords uh, for your database or any other use case, uh, Parameter Store is going to be the way to go. Uh, you would only use Secret Manager uh, for rotation of secrets. All right, so because we talked a little bit about price, um, sometimes that's not pretty, it's not always easy to understand how much that's truly going to cost for your particular use case. So let's math it out. Um, Assume you have 5,000 parameters, which, and of which 500 are advanced uh, parameters. Um, and let's say you interact with these parameters 24 times a day, equating to about 3.6 million uh, transactions over a 30-day period. Um, and assume you also have the higher throughput. Higher throughput is a new feature they just introduced with advanced parameters. That allows you to use the 100, transa 100 transactions per second or the 1,000 transactions per second that I spoke about earlier. Um, so when you look at the cost, you're going to pay for the 500 advanced parameters, five cents per secret. Uh, so that would be 25 bucks. And then the 3.6 uh, API uh, interaction, million API interactions would be, uh, you know, multiplied by five cents per 1,000 interactions. So that would equal out to be 18 bucks. So total monthly cost is about 43 bucks. But everyone's use case is going to be different. And as an engineer, this might be pretty important because you might have a, you know, cost limitations and things like that. So definitely make sure that when you do pick your secret uh, option, um, do the math behind how much it's going to cost on a monthly basis, whether, uh, and that'll help you determine whether you want to go with a managed service route or whether you want to go with a, uh, um, an on-prem or individually built out solution because there is going to be maintenance overhead. And there's a cost of engineering time uh, to maintain your own personal solution versus using this match service. Do they, does that weigh out? I don't know. You'd have to figure that out on your own. So, um, so now we're going to talk a little bit how you would integrate your secrets um, into your application. So you can do this pro pro programmatically. Uh, as I said earlier, with the example of if your application uh, is going to make databases call, database calls in real time, if you're using the SDK in this JavaScript example, you would use uh, ssn.getParameter, um, make the call to get the key with decryption, um, but you are going to be subject to that API rate limiting as you scale out your app across you know, um, your different clusters. Let's say if you're using ECS, you have a dev, stage, and prod cluster. If they're all in the same account, then you're going to be hitting API limits for that one account. Uh, so of course, if you're in a better solution and you're taking advantage of, uh, multi, of a multi-account setup like AWS organizations uh, that they have uh, available, then you might be able to manage that load um, if, you're, if your clusters are spread out across different accounts. Um, then of course, uh, my personal favorite is on startup. Uh, you can store your secret as a global environment variable, and then you wouldn't have to worry about accessing your secret uh, in the middle of an of a, of a application workflow. Uh, on startup, it would make the call to your parameter store uh, and then store them as global environment variables, and then you would just access them as you typically would through the application. Um, and then in, uh, uh, in a microservice world, if you are using uh, uh, ECS, um, they have a pretty seamless integration between parameter store and ECS task definitions. Uh, in your container definition, you would just um, define in the secrets key, uh, this is my global environment variable that I want to set, and this is its reference uh, to it in, in parameter store, and you would just use the fully qualified ARN to reference that key. Pretty straightforward, happens on start, startup. Is anyone actually using ECS? Okay, I don't envy you. I just started using ECS from Kubernetes and I, uh, it's lacking a lot of features. Um, but I am very happy that they do have this seamless integration with, secret, uh, with Parameter Store. Um, so then of course, if you are using Kubernetes, uh, if you're not familiar, this is what a simple service definition looks like. Um, you would have your, your spec that contains, provides your container image that you're going to be using, and then your different environment variables. Uh, you could you know, have the environment variables in plain text, or you can reference Kubernetes' own secret manager that they have um, already pre-built. So that secret manager that Kubernetes has also has its own template. 
Um, it would be of the kind uh, secret template, and then you would have your data. So for example, it would be a username, and that would be base64 encoded uh, value that you would then apply to your cluster. So then all your different containers in your cluster would just make this reference to the Kubernetes uh, secret uh, manager, and then they would, they would uh, pull information that they need that way. But the thing is, because Kubernetes is kind of an external, uh, um, um, I guess, feature from AWS, you would have to create that glue between Parameter Store and, and Kubernetes to kind of sync the secrets from Parameter Store to your Kubernetes secret. All right, so just a few tips. Um, diversity of secrets per environment uh, is key. You don't want to use the same secrets that you have in dev that you're using in production. I've seen time and time again when um, you know, devs are developing in their, in their different environments and now, um, I don't know, they've accidentally committed their .env file to their GitHub repo and that happens to be public and now you have production credentials in prod. So um, definitely diversity of secrets is key. Finally tune decrypt access roles for admins, developers, and PMs. Um, you know, share, you know, share your secret via secure channels. Example, LastPass, not paste bin. Um, <laughs> there's been many, many times I've, come, I've been browsing paste bin every now and then and found like developer configurations just chilling in, in the open. So um, as an as a exercise for you guys, I'd be very curious if you took like some developer credentials that you currently have at your company and just Google for it um, out there and see what, what you come up with. Um, and if anything, they, they, would, they should thank you that you found a security hole, but you know, don't blame me if they don't. <laughs> um, use temporary credentials where possible. Um, RDS came out with token-based uh, authentication, which is pretty sweet, which is just uh, temporary credentials. I think it lasts for like 15 minutes, so you don't have to actually give your devs um, uh, you know, static passwords that maybe you have to rotate every 90 days. They would just get these tokens when they need it, and they would refresh every 15 minutes um, during their work. And also, most importantly for secrets management is to, under is to make sure everybody understands it. Um, AWS has this, I guess, um, idea of a shared responsibility model. Um, I feel like this, this, com this is very important when it comes to site reliability and DevOps in general. Um, there is a shared responsibility model when it comes to securing your secrets between your DevOps guys and your engineers, because they're gonna be the ones interacting with it. Possibly you're gonna be handing over the keys to them so they can create their own secrets and not include you in, the, in that workflow. And so, the more people understand about your process, uh, hopefully the more eyes will see when uh, there are holes or things that you can fix. Um, and before I move on, does anyone have any questions about these tips that I provided over here? Or if you have your own tips in general that you've seen work in your different uh, jobs and careers? All right, so it wouldn't be a talk if I didn't have something to kind of sell, so to speak. So, Enforcer Reloaded, because this time it's personal. <laughs> and personal in the fact that I just forked it into my personal repo and made some changes. Um, so, um, I, you know, I've been working with Parameter Store for a while, and the UI completely sucks. So, I created CLI to help me expedite the uploading of secrets and so on and so forth. So, let me make this bigger real quick. And right now, it helps me uh, list secrets pretty quickly, create secrets, and kind of enforce the conventions that I need the developers uh, to use when creating secrets, whether that's tags for the secret, whether that is using defined KMS keys uh, for dev, stage, and prod. Um, and then also, sometimes we have really, really big secrets. So as I said earlier, your kube config can be pretty big, and it's gonna be a lot larger than 4KB or AKB. So it helps me chunk those, secret out, those secrets into 4K chunks, and then uploads them to Parameter Store, then merges them uh, when I need to use them. Um, and then it also has Kubernetes uh, synchronization helper function, um, just to kind of create that glue between Kubernetes and Parameter Store. Um, feature, a future wants is to handle advanced secrets since that's now our thing. Um, but you know, as with open source development, if anybody is using Parameter Store and has an interest in the tool like this, feel free to throw up a PR. Um, so I just want to give a real quick demo 
on Enforcer real quick. All right, let me make this bigger. All right, is this good? Can everyone see the terminal? Raise your hands. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to do reloaded, help. It's always the first place you want to start. And I'm just going to show the different features that you can upload, list, show, and then interpolate by taking a Kubernetes secret template and interpolate values. Um, we're just going to do a real simple um, reload example using my enforcer profile. We're going to use SSM dev. All right. Well, actually, I think I don't need this. Let's see what happens. Let's call this example. Oh, and the, another important thing about parameter store is that the secrets are stored in kind of like a file directory. So you always got to start with a, with, a, with a forward slash and then along with the name of your key. So it's kind of like you can create directory buckets for your secrets, so to speak. So example secret test. And then the way this works is you just copy uh, the secret that you want to copy. And then it's going to show me this. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just going to be region US2, profile enforcer, use the KMS key, SSM dev, upload, poof. Pretty straightforward. And now I'm going to show you how it interpolates um, Kubernetes secret templates. So I have this template over here uh, that takes a username, a password, and an email. And from Parameter Store, you're going to access a key uh, for the account um, Template. So if I look over here, you're going to see, whoops. You see, this is why this UI sucks. <laughs> um, so I'm going to access this key over here, account username. Uh, that just happens to have the value username. And it's going to be for the account bucket. So my template is going to be account.yaml. I'm going to use reloaded, interpolate. Account YAML uh, with a directory account dash D. Uh, it's going to be for Kubernetes with a profile enforcer. And you're going to see it spits out a uh, kube, uh, a Kubernetes uh, secret template that I can then pipe into a Kubernetes apply and call it a day. And you're going to notice that it base64 encoded the password in the email, but it didn't for the username because I didn't define the pipe base64. Um, just Heads up, in case you're actually storing your secrets already base64 encoded, uh, then you don't have to pipe it into anything. So that is pretty much my spiel. Um, does anyone have any questions? OK, there you go. So? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you go to GitHub slash cave slash enforcer, <laughs> You'll see I forked it from Upside Travel. That's where I used to work. Um, and uh, yeah, just check it out. Um, my readme, I hope, is pretty verbose. But if it's not, uh, you can either hit me up on Twitter and say, hey, your readme sucks. You need to improve it. Um, and I'll get to work. Any other questions? All right. And before I close out, I got to give the obligate. You know what I mean. We're hiring at Cvent Social Tables. Uh, we're looking for engineering managers, lead software engineers, senior site reliability, senior site reliability engineers to help me because I'm the only one right now, um, and other engineers as well. So check us out. Um, this has been cool. Thanks for listening.